worship. Breakthrough 
Welcome to the gathering, YouTube. Uh, we're so thankful that you're here with us. Now, here's the thing. No one, no one likes to be outed. We don't like to hang our dirty laundry out for all to see, though it does happen to public figures all the time. Now, as I was thinking back, my first experience seeing this was probably back in the 80s, early 90s, when the evangelist Jimmy Swagger got caught with prostitutes. And it blew my mind because it made national news. It was everywhere. And it was a tragedy for the church. And they began to hunt for other leaders who had moral failures. It became this feeding frenzy to go after Christians. And for those of you who may be younger, you may go to Jimmy Who. Uh, and, but you remember a few years ago when Steve Harvey made this colossal blunder in the Miss Universe pageant? Maybe you do, maybe you don't. But he announced the wrong winner. I mean, you get up there and they hand him a card, he announces the wrong winner. And it was extremely awkward and I, I'm, I'm sure embarrassing. And even though this wasn't a moral failure, it was something that has kind of marked who he is. Or how about the time that Tiger Woods got chased out of his house with a golf club? I mean, great golfer. Who knew his wife could swing a club? At the time, he was at the height of his popularity. He was the greatest golfer of the time, making over $110 million in endorsements. But in 2009, the New York Post reported that he had many affairs, and his wife went after him. She found out about it. They divorced, and it seemed like, at least to me, it seems like he's never really recovered. Now, now look, I'm, I'm not celebrating this. It's a tragedy, and no one likes to be seen for who they are. I don't like to, to have to watch stuff and see people's lives like that, but you spend a lot of time, I spend a lot of time covering up the real you. So when things get aired, it's painful. And thankfully for us, we don't have to live lives where the New York Post or the New York Times or anything like that would care what we do. In fact, most people don't care what we do. However, we still fear being exposed. See, we don't want our dark secrets found out. 
But today we're going to talk about another dangerous prayer. This is a prayer of exposing the secrets, exposing the darkness in our life. And, and what we want is we want you to come clean with the shadiest, shadiest parts of your life, but on your own volition. And it seems crazy, but that's what we do when we pray dangerous prayer. When we pray this dangerous prayer, cleanse me, that's what we do is we open up and let all of our dirty laundry out. So as we jump in, let me remind you of where we've been so far, this, this idea of dangerous prayers. Dangerous prayers are, are where you invite God to work in your life and lead you a deeper experience as a Christ follower. So the first week, we look at this prayer asking God, your will be done. Most of the time, it's our will we want done. But when you start praying, God, your will be done, the big idea for that was to pray a prayer that aligns your will with God's will. Last week, we looked at this prayer, God, send me. The, the big idea was, Lord, send me so that I can be a blessing to the world. You know, when you pray that, you say, God, send me. Guess what? He's probably going to send you. He's going to send you somewhere. And if you feel like your spiritual life is dull or monotonous or unfulfilled, maybe you need to pray prayers that matter. I think we got to quit sitting around passively and become the force to be reckoned with that God created you to be. You are not ordinary. God created you to be this force. And we believe that prayers, the prayers that we pray in the series, will help you become more in love with God. You'll see His power and faithfulness in your life, and it will change your relationship with Him. And it's so important to have this vibrant relationship with Him. We believe that these prayers will help you become more in love with people. Oh my gosh, we, we need that so much in our culture right now. We need relationships to be healed. And we, we need to learn to love the way that Jesus loves us. But finally, we, we believe that these prayers, these crazy dangerous prayers, will move you to become an impact maker. I, I, our prayer is that it will drive you to make a difference in this world. I mean, we, we've got to do that as God's people. So today, we're in this dangerous prayer, this really crazy, dangerous prayer, this hard, dangerous prayer. And the big idea is, Lord, cleanse me of my sin so that I can grow closer to you. Lord, cleanse me of my sin so I can grow closer to you. Now, now this, is a, this is a prayer that we, we should pray on a regular basis. But today, we're going to look at this Psalm 51, where David was going through sin and and coming out on the other side and praying to God. And so before we dive in, let's make sure we clarify what we mean by the word confession. See, um, I know watching, we come from different denominational backgrounds. We have preconceived ideas about this. And so I want you to be very clear of what I'm talking about today when I say confessing. To be clear, um, we're talking about confessing our sins to God. And we, I believe, I believe the Bible teaches that we can go directly to God with our sins. We don't need a middleman. Not that we shouldn't confess our sins one to another, but we don't need a middleman. Listen to what Hebrews says. Is, Therefore, let us approach the throne of grace with boldness so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. See, the greatness of grace is that we can now approach God and confess our sins. But then the question comes to mind, why should we? If God already knows, why should we confess our sins? I think it's because if it's left unaddressed, our sin will keep us distance from God. See, our, our, for me, my prayers sometimes only go to the ceiling. They bounce back. And you see, David understood this um, better than anyone because of what was going on in his life. David pled with God in Psalm 51, 11, said, Do not banish me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. David understood what it meant to be separated from God. See, David had known the happiness of walking intimately with God. He had a fulfilling relationship and was a friend of God. But then because of his sin of adultery, man, the intimacy went away. It wasn't there anymore. His sin put this distance between he and God, which was odd for him. And see, when you read the New Testament, the same thing happened with Jesus at the cross. From eternity past, the Father and Son had perfect communion. But when our sin was placed on Jesus at the cross, that communion was broken for the one and only time in eternity. And man, it caused Jesus such anguish because now he wasn't close in relationship with the Father. And see, this could be you in this moment. Maybe you feel like you're far from God. You feel like that God is way, way, way out there. He has seemed so far away. You might even feel that God cares for you, but you just don't sense his presence. I mean, maybe you're looking for direction for your life. 
You believe he speaks and directs other people, but you don't see it in your own life. Man, there seems to be a wall between you and God. And I just want you to know, this probably is, could be, but I think it probably is. The reason for this, there's sin in your life. And I want you to know this. Your sin does not alter God's love for you, but it does impact your intimacy with Him. See, when we don't acknowledge and confess it, sin keeps us from experiencing a close relationship with Him. It it, it keeps us distant. Think think about this. No relationship is static. No relationship just kind of sits there. And your relationship with God is no different. You're either growing closer to God or you're growing farther, farther away from Him. And you may not have noticed, it, noticed that you've wandered away from them. You may not even realize what's happening. And, and in most cases, it's probably not even intentional. See, I, one of the things I understand about people and I understand about myself, no one tries to get lost. It's just not something we do. I mean, did you ever get lost as a kid? I mean, I remember as a child at the grocery store uh, one day, I walked away from my mom, probably going to look at the cereal boxes to see what prize was in it. And when I came back, she wasn't there. She had disappeared, and I was panicked. And I ran around the store called, Mama, Mama. Man, it's so easy to get lost. I mean, many of you remember the days before GPS, and you would call AAA and ask for a trip ticket. And you follow the directions. It would be like a book, like page after page of directions. And it was like, drive 4.3 miles and turn on such and such a road. And I found this extremely hard for me as a Southerner uh, because that's not how we do directions down here. I mean, have you ever noticed that if you live in the South, directions are not by miles, it's by minutes. You'll say, hey, drive 10 minutes and you'll see a white mailbox by a rock on the left side of the road and you turn right there. And those directions are hard to follow and you may get lost, but you're getting lost unintentionally. And the truth is we all get lost at times. Uh, We've all wandered away from God, every one of us. And sometimes it's been intentional as as I willfully pursue sin, but most of the time it's just unintentional. But the truth is it still happens. But I want to give you some good news. The good news is that in my wandering, my wonder has not altered God's love for me. However, however, it has put distance between me and God. So that's why we need to pray this prayer, cleanse me. See, cleanse me is a prayer that will bring me close to God again. So what happens when I pray this this crazy, bold, dangerous prayer? Well, first thing is this. When I pray, cleanse me, I acknowledge my dirt. I acknowledge the mess in my life. I say, God, I am a messed up person. I'm admitting to God that I've sinned. I'm saying, God, I've sinned. I own up the fact that I've raised a barrier between me and him. He didn't raise it. I raised it. I admit that I've, I've moved, and he is not. See, Jesus told his prayer about two men. And one who acknowledges dirt and the other that didn't has found Luke chapter 18. Incredible story, incredible picture here that we get. It says this in verse 10. Two men went up to the temple to pray. One a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. Now the Pharisee was standing and praying like, like this about himself. And I mean, I, I just got this picture of him standing there going, God, I thank you that I'm not like the other great people, greedy and unrighteous, adulterers, and even like this tax collector right here. In fact, I fast twice a week. I give a tenth of everything I get. I mean, can't you just kind of see this picture playing out? Because we see it even in churches. Some of you don't even go to church because you've experienced this. And we read this in our first response, that Pharisee is an arrogant individual. And it's so easy to judge him. But the truth is, the hard truth is, we are so much like him. Because the truth is, we, we've not committed the biggies like murder or adultery or stealing. And the truth is, we're pretty good, unlike all the people we see on the 6 o'clock news. But Jesus continues, and kind of blows it away. He says, but the tax collector, standing far off, would not even raise his eyes to heaven, but kept striking his chest and saying, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Brokenness, broken. And then Jesus said, I tell you this, one went down to his house justified rather than the other one. Because everyone who exalts himself be humble, but the one who humbles himself will be exalted. And see, you got to imagine what the people in the crowd are hearing when Jesus is telling the story. See, the, the people listening knew who was dirty. It was the tax collector. I mean, tax collectors were the bottom dwellers of their society. They got rich by cheating their neighbors. 
And if you stood a Pharisee up to a tax collector, 10 out of 10 times, a Jew would point the tax collector and say he was dirty. But the problem is verse 14 tells us that only one man walked away justified by God, and that is the one who acknowledged his dirt. That's the one who understood he was a sinner. That's the one that looked at God and said, I've messed up against you and you only have I sinned, O Lord. And you see, often you feel far from God and stuck in your spiritual journey and don't even realize it's because we have a sin issue. It's like having something stuck in your teeth and then right in the middle and it repulses all those who see it, but you're oblivious to it. And you see, sin can be like that. Sin can be just, it's there, but we don't even pay attention to it. And in fact, sometimes we don't even think we're a sinner, but the Apostle John warns in, in 1 John, he says, if we claim to have no sin, we're only fooling ourselves. And not living in the truth. In other words, every, every one of us has sin in our life. Every one of us is messed up. Every one of us has dirt. And the dirt might be, I mean, it could be things like the lie we told. It could be the website we visited. I mean, it could be the poverty that we just driven by and ignored. It could be a racist comment that we didn't confront. It could be the juicy news that we just shared around the water cooler. It could be the stuff that we bought. But understand, acknowledging your dirt is about more than drawing up a list of specific sins. It's also about recognizing the ways we have tried to find hope and significance in something other than God. It's not just a do's and don'ts. It it can be where we place our priorities. See, there, there, there may have been times where we've been more concerned with pleasing people over God. That's a problem. Or maybe we've looked to fulfillment and power, prestige, possessions, rather than a relationship with Jesus. That's a huge problem. And those two are all over the church. Or may we trust our own ingenuity and effort instead of trusting in God. Man, we're talented people. we got educations. We, we're capable of a lot of things. And so when we say cleanse me, it's not just an acknowledgement that I have dirt. It's also recognition that I can't cleanse myself. Man, I can't fix it. God knows I've tried. I need God, just like the tax collector did, to say, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Bring that relationship back the way it should be. But the second thing is this. When I pray, cleanse me, I allow God to wash me. I allow God to get in and clean me up. We just read 1 John 1, 8, but you have to read the follow-up verse because it's, it's good news. It is great news. If we, if we confess our sins, He, Jesus, faithful and just and righteous to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. See, you work so hard to hide our dirt because we're afraid of being exposed, afraid of being judged, afraid of being rejected. And God tells us to confess it to him. And then what does he do? He forgives. He cleanses. He does the opposite of what we expect. We expect as a God of the earth of creation to do what everybody else does and rejects. Instead, he makes us clean. And you see, parents understand this. I think parents get this. Our children are far from perfect, but a good parent wants the best for their children even when they're the worst. See, my kids have, they've been successful at hiding some things from me. But there's much that I know. There are a lot of things they think I don't know, but I know. And I'm gracious in that. And it's gracious that they're still alive sometimes. When they, when, when they come clean, I offer even more grace. And while I'm imperfect to this whole parenting thing, imagine what a perfect father the creator of the universe will do. See, God really does want to cleanse you and make the relationship right. And that's why praying cleanse me is a dangerous prayer because it's an invitation to God to direct the actions of your life. It's much easier to play safe and pray things like, God changed my circumstances. God God fixed my circumstances. Or God changed my situation. Those are are namby-pamby little prayers. They're not dangerous. But when you pray cleanse me, you're saying, God, I am the problem. God changed me. It's the, one, it's the one time that we say, it's not you, it's me, when it's true. Now, it takes courage to pray this. I'm telling you, it takes courage. It takes humility because it means you're not in charge anymore. But if you want God to work in your life, it is a prayer that you have to pray all the time. We have to get a little dangerous and invite God to get in our dirt. David put it this way in the midst of all this, in the midst of all this thing. He said to God, purify me with hyssop and wash me clean. Wash me and I'll be whiter than snow. Turn your face away from my sins and blot out all of my guilt. Now, I love this. God, create a clean heart in me, for me. 
and renew a steadfast spirit with them. Amen. He is inviting God to get into him, to just take him and clean him up. The, the imagery of washing at, at, for the New Testament is the same as we have in baptism. It represents how we're mysteriously washed clean. Our, sin, uh, our sins are washed clean by God. When we're lowered in the water, it represents the good news and a fresh start for you. I mean, it's, it's, you see that same picture every time we baptize somebody. I love this quote. It says, what happens to us in baptism is bestowed upon us anew in confession. When we're delivered out of darkness into the kingdom of Jesus Christ, that is joyful news. Confession is the renewal of the joy of baptism. That was written by a guy named Dietrich Bonhoeffer, who ultimately gave his life for the cause of Christ. See, confession takes us back to the day when we were washed through baptism. When we, where every time we confess, it's taken us back to that. Jesus declared, uh, said this, he said, um, when we said, I will follow you, Jesus, when I'm going to follow you, that's what's happening. Uh, I'm being clean. It moves us past the barriers that put distance between us and God. It moves us forward so we can experience intimacy with him again. And it happens when we pray, God, cleanse me. I acknowledge my dirt. I acknowledge my mess, and I allow you, God, to wash me. So what's our next step? What do we do? What, what, are, some, what are some things we can do to move forward? I think, one, we need to pray this prayer regularly. It needs to be like a daily thing. Here, here's some encouragement for you. You have to create, create intentional space to do this. It doesn't come naturally, man. It does not come naturally to admit that we're wrong. None of us likes to admit we're wrong or lost. This prayer requires me to take time to reflect on my life daily, weekly, hourly. You know, I've heard a couple ways to do this. When I was younger, I found that journaling worked for me. I don't do it as much anymore, but it was a useful tool. I, I would write down what was in my head, what was in my heart, and then I'd write down prayers to God, saying, God, you know, I'd do this in my life. Do this for me. And occasionally I could go back and look and see how God had been faithful. That's, that's one way to create space. Another one I heard, I thought this was interesting. I thought this was pretty cool because we all hopefully take showers every day. This gentleman who used to, when he would shower, he'd make, use that as an intentional spacing to ask God to search him. And as he washed his head, he'd think about his mind and the thoughts that may be dwelling there and not pleasing God. He'd say, God, you know, I'm sorry for that thought in my life. You know, clean me, cleanse me. As he washed his face, he'd consider what he had looked at or what he had said. And God, you know, I'm sorry for that. God, forgive me. God, cleanse me. God, clean me. It, as he washed his chest, he would consider his heart and confess his anger and his bitterness that might be uh, there. They may be holding against someone. I mean, you kind of get the picture. I think this is an incredible way to be reminded every time if, if you take shower every day. The point is, create intentional space for something that does not come naturally. And ultimately, this prayer is about intimacy with God and, grow, and having a growing relationship with Him. It, it's about making sure you're right so that you can speak to God and your prayers are not bouncing off the ceiling. And so maybe today, you're feeling distant from God. Maybe your spiritual journey has been stalled. You feel like it's stalled. Or, or maybe you just feel stuck and not growing. See, I, I want you to remember this. This is so key. Your sin does not alter God's love for you but it does impact your intimacy with him. So perhaps today you need to pray this dangerous prayer of cleanse me. Maybe you need to do that. We're, we're going to create some intentional space, and, and you're gonna have, you can go to our music and listen to what we have on there, and as our band plays, just pray and ask God to cleanse you. And admit that you can't do it yourself. And what I'd say is don't let anything stand in your way. You, you know, the enemy's going to say, oh, you can't do that. It's not going to happen. Man, do whatever you have to do. And I encourage you to acknowledge the sin in your life today. Confess it to God. Ask him to cleanse you. It is a dangerous, dangerous, dangerous prayer. But I hope that you'll pray it. Let's pray. Father, we love you. And we thank you for... The fact that, you don't, that, that you've forgiven us at the cross when we get in that relationship with you. But we're so often we're there, and, and man, it feels like our prayers are going nowhere. And, Lord, it's because of the sin in our lives. And, Lord, we've got we've to admit that to you. You're God, and we're not. You are always right, and so many times we're not. And so, Lord, I pray for each one of us. We begin to pray this dangerous prayer of cleanse me and invite you into our lives to wash us and make us new. 
so that we can have a great relationship with you. We can grow more in love with you. We can have great relationships with those around us. And ultimately, Lord, we want to impact our world for you. And we praise you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. Let this be a prayer this morning.